Okay, so when we left off, our boy, Nicky Forrest right here, died. Alright. And he died right here at the Kai. Even though it was Kaiser, he dies at the Kai. So he's kind of short. Because after all, he did a coup d'etat to take over power. God never favors that. Alright. But at the same time, you know, you do a thing wrong and you do a thing right. And that's the way Revelation 1 through 3 is worded. He said, I got this against you. And yet, on the other hand, this is what you're doing that's okay. So, it's kind of a half report card. Because Kai... All right, and and he was a unit. I mean, it's really. It, it sounds like well, that's just the word and, but it's bigger than that. He united. One of the big things that happened during his time um, was, like I started to say, a sort of um, warming up with the, you know, um, newly crowned. As far as being an emperor is concerned, the newly crowned uh, Charlemagne. Now the problem was, Charlemagne was already a king, and while he was just a king, and not Holy Roman Emperor, relations really warmed up between, you know, the Franks and the Byzantine Empire. A lot. They had a lot of the same enemies, they had a lot of the same interests in Bible, blah blah blah, there was a lot of cross-pollination. I'm sure a lot of Greek manuscripts found their way over to the Franks, who were really hungry for them. So that part was good, but like I said, the papacy didn't want those relationships to be too warm, so it inserted itself. And Charlemagne, in deference to, I don't know, maybe he even believed in the papacy, but in deference to at least his people who did, he goes and helps the Pope. When the Pope says, hi, the Lombards are killing us, please subdue them and free us. Well, Charlemagne did that. As a result of that, by 800 A.D., the papacy is looking at Byzantines, and it's looking at Charlemagne, and both of them are really strong, and it's thinking, you know, I want to, I want to have a voice in this. I want to be a kingmaker. And therefore, the Pope crowned Charlemagne head of the Holy Roman Empire. Now that's when it started. They, they just called it Holy Roman Empire. Okay, well, the whole thing with the Byzantines is empire. I mean, even today, the whole mystique in Russia is that of being empire. All right, so, you know, everything that's happening in the period I'm talking about is still true today in a different form, updated form. So the Russians, the reason why Putin gets, gets you know, to have his way so much, not just because he's a bully and he's a tyrant, but people in Russia want the return of the glory of the empire okay well that's how they felt then because they just undergone all that you know 23 years with Irene and because of the 23 years with the pro icon Irene they started losing against the Arabs they were losing against the ever invading Bulgars they started losing ground you know with um, the, the um, various sections in Italy that were always at their lower left flank and they were feeling like, oh, we're not important anymore, yada yada. Yeah, you know, their whole sense of national identity is empire. So when Charlemagne is crowned in a rival empire, you know, Pope is no dummy, he knows what he's doing, Th that created a problem for Nikephorus. Okay? It's like, okay, well, we're friends, but I can't, see, we call ourselves empire. There can't be two of us. So he wouldn't recognize Charlemagne's crowning. And that was a real sticking point between the Franks and the Byzantines. Alright? So what ended up happening is that there was supposed to be, and this was another sticking point that had happened earlier, there was supposed to be a marriage between Charlemagne's daughter and Irene's kid, Constantine VI. And that didn't happen when her husband died she wanted to go pro-icon and she wanted to pick out her own idea of who Constantine the Sixth ought to marry and so you know it was like screw you Franks we don't need you 
You know, because she was all full of herself. She didn't understand. And she was starting to lose territory and lose control and lose all kinds of things right, right left, and center. And that's why by 802, 23 years ago, it took that long. Um, you know, she gets overthrown by this Nick of Forest guy. Because it's like, hi, you're ruining our empire. Empire, empire, empire. Our empire looks bad. Our empire is suffering. Everything with those people is empire and still is today. Okay? And it's kind of foreign for us Americans to, to think about it that way. Because to us, the word empire is a bad word. Alright? To them, it was a good word. And it still is. So even back then, in the 800s at this point, early, you know, the beginning of the 800s, um, when Nikephorus is after post-Irene, he's taken over in the name of empire, sees this guy, Charlemagne, who he probably liked, I mean, I don't really know how much he liked him personally, getting crowned by the Pope. You have to understand the Byzantine Empire has, has, has from almost the get-go, been anti-Pope. Okay, it's like, oh, well, this is the worst thing you can commit. You're going to recognize as another empire. A guy who's crowned by the Pope. Okay, this is ridiculous. And, you know, and in the upper areas, the upper echelons of power, they all knew, as did Charlemagne, that the Pope is doing his little thing to try and stay relevant. And it really doesn't matter. Okay, but the common people are ignorant and you can't explain all this to them. All they see is, oh, there's another empire besides ours. And oh, the Pope crowned him. So you're kind of politically stuck. You have to oppose it. But at the same time, Nicephorus didn't break off relations or didn't try to go war or anything. But they, Charlemagne had certain territories in Italy and Dalmatia that the Byzantines laid claim to. And was very going to be very happy to, you know, give them back. Except, hi, our price now for giving it back, since you've already turned down my daughter, is going to have to be um, recognizing me as emperor. And Nicephorus wouldn't do that. This is real important to how the history goes after this. So that remained a sticking point in an otherwise positive Byzantine Empire that had just thrown away its icon drooling ruler. Okay, it was wrong how they got the power over her. In case she was just going to die in 803 anyhow. You saw that. That's right up here. Okay. When you're going to die, you're going to die. It's God's will to take you. If you're not supposed to die today, then nothing can make you die. It doesn't mean you should go out and drink poison, but it does mean you should be pretty secure that if you die, it's because God says so. Alright, so they shouldn't have overthrown her. They should have waited for God to do it. Just like I'm waiting for Donald Trump. Every single day, I want God to kill him. And every single day, I know that's not the right thing to want because God will do it in his own time. I want God to kill me too. But I'm still here. Alright, so... The same thing. Nikkei Forest was not so enlightened a conqueror to understand that, no, you don't take over God's job. Alright? So Constantine the Sext was, you know, sort of pushed out, not only by his own mom, but by the leadership who supported Nikkei Forest instead of him. That was, that was wrong. So they sort of get punished for that. And why do they get punished for that? Between 802 and 811, see, this is where... This is 810. This is where he dies. They still have in the land false Christs. See, this is where she dies. There's still false Christs and false prophets. And all those false prophets are busy saying, I can worship, I can worship, I can worship, I can worship. And there were also false prophets about who was going to rule the empire, who was right for the empire. There's a lot of civil war going on. And Nikephorus has a lot of people he's got to fight against internally. In addition to that, due to the weakness under Irene, the Arabs and the Bulgars have made some inroads and he's got to fight against them too. It was not a happy time for him. His nine years was not, not pleasant. After that, he's, he's, he dies basically in a battle against, I want to say it was the Bulgars. His son was with him, 
His son gets mortally wounded in that battle, lives just long enough to finally agree to a replacement named Michael I Rangabi. Rangabi. And also just long enough to sort of like settle high, are we going to be pro or con, pro icon or against icon? And the answer was against. Okay? But it wasn't real strong because there were a whole bunch of pro icon people they had to deal with. So it was kind of loosey goosey and, and, you know, they were trying to live and let live because that was the policy that Nikki Forrest wanted. But the icon, pro icon people, and this, this is true for the pro lifers today too, when somebody makes an issue of something that isn't in the Bible, like pro life, it's totally anti biblical. When somebody makes an issue of something anti-biblical, they turn to politics to make that issue. Hi, if what you propose were really so godly, then why not pray to God for it? You don't need politics. If you don't like abortion, just pray to God to end it. You don't politic to Caesar. Caesar can't rule on when life begins, but God can. That's his job. It says so in Genesis 2-7, only you become human at birth. Oh, birth, you only become human at birth. Well, if I ask God to stop abortion, he's not going to do that because you're not even human. And it should be a spiritual matter between God and the woman as to whether she gets the abortion in the first place. Because what is God's will for that fetus? Should it be born? Should it be ruled out? Because after all, the woman's alive. Does God want her to become a mother? What if he doesn't? So you'd be violating the will of God to not get an abortion too. The Bible makes a big stink about that, but I let it go. The point is, Rogambi was going to continue Nikiforis's policy, which he does. Okay, but then he gets pushed over because he's a little too friendly to the icon lover people, who you know politically they're pol politicized the icon just like pro life politicized a fetus, which means that they don't care about the fetus at all. If you actually care about the fetus, you go to God because he's the one who's got control over it, not to Caesar. Okay? So they were fake. They didn't care, you know, about God. And the uh, icon worshippers didn't either. They just wanted to, because they made money off all that icon worship. They got approval by the people and they made money. And, you know. So... You got in power by ousting? Because that's what happened in Nicky Forest, too. Alright, so now you get in power by ousting. Replacing him by coup d'etat. He's a former general, unrelated to the family, a guy named Leo II. Who I should bold. Alright, Leo II. He's an Armenian. So. And I used the wiki link here because I can't find my usual site doesn't have anything on this guy. Leo the Five, the Armenian. And he's iconoclast. So now, you know, this was a wrong thing to happen, but when the, you know, the pro-icon people make a political stink, well then you have to rise up against them. And now the anti-icon people are in power through political means over something that shouldn't be a political issue to start with. That's what's happening in the United States right now, too. Is that in order to overthrow Donald Trump, we have to overthrow the pro-lifers. Well, they shouldn't be in office in the first place. Pro-life, not pro-life, those aren't even proper political questions. Those are questions you go to God about. It violates the separation of church and state to be on either side of that question. The whole abortion question and funding and all of it should just not even be a part of our government. Okay, just not. There's all kinds of charity that you can give to organizations that do that, that do abortions. That's fine. Government shouldn't take a position pro or con abortion. They should stay the hell out of your personal life, period, on everything. But they don't. See, people politicize personal issues. They politicize faith issues. Because what they really want is political power, and they don't give a flip about the issue they're campaigning for. The people who fought against the South in the Civil War, they didn't care about the slaves. They thought, oh, now that free labor, we can get that 
we can get that low price labor and all oh, we can take some land away and all oh, we can make financial gain if we have this war that's what they cared about and you know maybe Lincoln meant well but it didn't turn out well and he died the week afterwards so he didn't help the blacks at all it's the same story here yeah okay the anti-icon people who are back to the Bible and oh yeah rah rah Bible and they believe in it and that's right to do but they gain political power to do it. Now, in the circumstance, you can argue, well, they couldn't help it, and God bless Leo very much, actually, in in being able to put down the civil war that was going on and repulse the Bulgars and repulse the Arabs who had made so many inroads. You know, God really helped him. But at the same time, why should they have to go to political power in order to you know, get rid of the the pro icon people. Well, you know, you can talk about that all day long. That's what's bad about it. You shouldn't have to politicize. But they did. So that's history. So that's the story here. Okay. And then he rules to eight thirteen to eight twenty. Now, the whole reason for giving you that backdrop first is so that when I go through the scripture on that period it'll make a little more sense. Okay, we had our boy Nikki Forrest dying here. Alright, so that's 8 11, 12, 13. This is when, I mean, see, it's Kai, and then the doll is his son dying. Basically, really, he died in, also in 8 11, so it depends on what fiscal year we're looking at here. Okay, his son dies a few months later. Um, also in the same battle, mortally wounded. Okay, so then there's 812, we got a little interregnum there, and one person is on the throne, I forget his name, and I don't care. Okay, it's in the next year, 813, well, Rangabi is there. So he, 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 he's got, he takes over after um, Nicky Forrest's son dies. And then he ends being replaced by coup d'etat by Leo V. So this is 811. 812, 813 is when the changeover takes place. Now look at that verb. Du susin. They will, it, it's usually translated in your English Bibles, and they, and he will perform, it's really they will perform miracles, signs, that's a word for sign, and wonders. Okay? But right now we're just at, and they will, and it's really give. Okay, they will give. You're giving something like we well, even say it in English. You give a performance. You're you're producing something out of yourself. All right. They will give. Okay, they, Nicky Forrest, his son-in-law, his son, then his son-in-law, and then they are given over. Different verb. to Leo V who's an outsider. Now notice what we don't have. We only have the death of Nikiforus and his son. We don't have the death of Michael Rangabi. We also don't have any words that are used for death. Blepite is the word that's usually used for death of an emperor in Mark. Because it's a play on it. You know, when you're dead you don't see or when you're dead you see God. Ha ha. Alright. He's given over, and actually what happened was Rangabi got sort of head, heads up that they were replacing him by a coup. So just before they actually come into the palace to take over, he contacted a monk and said, Hi, make me a monk. Your way of escaping, I don't know why they were so fond of it. In the Byzantine Empire, when you were getting overthrown, they either blinded you and made you a monk, or you became a monk. And sometimes they castrated you, the idea being you can't have kids that can come back and, and take over the empire. So he just said, oh, okay, I'm not even going to wait for this. He called a monk, he said, tonsure me, cut my hair a certain way, make me a monk right now. And so by the time that they broke in, he's like, hi, I'm already a monk, I've already abdicated. Oh, okay, well then you can go live at the monastery. And they do. That, th that's the common thread throughout the whole of Byzantine history. It's the weirdest thing. And I, I don't know how to explain why they chose to do that. 
it means that there's a certain real attachment to God, and yet not so real because how come they don't know His Word better? Okay, it's a very emotional attachment to God, I guess. Because they're not killing each other. They just become monks. And that rules you out from being able to be a ruler. That, you know, you can go read the history yourself. It's really interesting and there's a link to it. Okay, so Leo the fourth, fifth, now, who is not at all related to the other Leos, he was a general under Nikephorus and under Rangabi with his co-patriots forms a coup d'etat and he's now in power from 813 to 820 alright so now let's look at that come on mouse alright right here is 813 so now we got the next seven syllables 814, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 7 so now we count seven syllables Se my ya sign Kai and Se my ya Kai that's four Te Ra Ta that's another three so there we come to the end of our seven syllables now this is the satire in this is so rich that you're gonna die okay so our boy came into power here and he leaves power here and the words that's depicting his reign get this the words that are depicting his reign are Samaya Kaiterata. If you study this guy's history for the seven brief years he ruled, and especially the wiki article which calls attention to it, but I don't think they know the meter, is that in 815, that's 815 right here. See, this was 13, 14, 15. If you go read the wiki article, <laughs> I need to die now. One of the things that Leo had said to the people in 815, right where the cursor is, first sentence in Samaya, you got that. That's 815. The wiki article, you can read it for yourself, says in 815, marked right here, that the people and him and the leadership all decided that all of their losses to the Arabs and the Bulgars and the Franks were a sign that pro-iconism is wrong. Do you get the wit there? God, the Holy Spirit, thought it important enough to time the word Samaya to the very time when Leo was going to say, you know, on behalf of or in concert with all of his advisors, oh, all of our losses to the, you know, to the Bulgars and the Arabs and the Franks, our losses must be because it's a sign that we shouldn't be pro-icon. Now look at the text of the verse. It's still talking about pseudo-Christs and pseudo-prophets. And they, the pseudo-Christs and the pseudo-prophets, will perform signs and wonders. And prosto is another way of saying in order that. It means in front of, in front of your face. And then to is like the purpose to deceive if possible and this word if is in the first class condition so it means yes it's possible Kai doesn't belong there the elect in other words what was going on in the time and you can see this in Leo's own words it's so hysterical <coughs> is that the pro icon people were the reason why they got the money and they got the attention and they got the this and that and the other thing is they were constantly saying, oh, and, and you can just read this in their literature. Oh, I waved the robe of Mary Theotakos at the enemy and they went away. That was a sign from God. Okay, that was a wonder, a miracle from God. And they would say those things about, you know, 
some finger that they claim belonged to Mark or something. You know, Mark was supposedly the apostle to the East after this. I don't know if that's actually true, but all the people in the East say so. They make up a lot of stories, so you don't know. But what if they had Mark's finger? Oh, well, see, I waved, I took Mark's finger, even though it was putrid and everything. I waved it in front of the enemy when I took it out of its special velvet box. And the enemy just died in front of my face. See, that was a sign. That was a wonder. That's the kind of things they were saying about all those icons. So it's really ironic that Leo is going to, you know officially say well all if, if you're going to talk about signs and wonders how about the signs and wonders of the fact that we've been losing our empire our empire our empire is being shamed by all of our losses maybe it's due to you guys who worship those icons maybe we should actually worship the guy who wrote the bible since the word is the closest thing to him since it's actually in his head and he put it in our heads and that's the kind of relic he wants hmm Maybe we should take that sign. All those losses are signs and wonders that we should not be worshipping the icons the way you do. So, they returned to iconoclasm. So, they returned to smashing idols. They went a little too far. Because, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna smash an idol, then you're just going to encourage the person whose idol you smashed to still be pro-idol worship. Right? But that's what they did here. So under his seven years, from here to here, well, seven years starting here, but ending here, signs and wonders. And obviously the pro-icon people are going to claim all these signs and wonders from their icons to avoid them being destroyed. And Leo's therefore countering with, hi, it's a sign and wonder that you guys are bad because we keep losing and the empire, 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 empire is suffering. God is not with us because of you. And they're saying, oh, but see the sign and the wonder that the icon did and they'll make up something. So isn't this a clever way to characterize his reign? Give signs and wonders. Now, you can read the rest of what he did, because he was pretty successful in keeping, you know, making, repairing the alliance with the Franks, for example, in beating back the Arabs, and beating back the Bulgars. You can read about him right there in Wiki, or, you know, not just Wiki. Wiki is sometimes bad. Cross-check it with other sources. Just Google on him. That's his name, Leo V, V the Armenian. All right? And, you know, see what you think about this period. Now that you know what it covers. Dosusin. Dosusin. Semaya kaiterata. Gave. Signs. And. Wonders. Okay? Peace out.